So if you're a homeschooler, you probably spend some time on social media like Instagram or TikTok and usually what you see are just like the fun, exciting, you know, happy times that happen in homeschooling. But the reality is like anything in life, there are highs and lows. And today we're gonna get into that. So if you're new here, I'm Sue from the Homeschool Front blog and this is my YouTube channel, Life in the Trenches, where I share all things about homeschooling and how you can make it simple and easy so that it is enjoyable and sustainable. Because I don't know about you, but I'm here to homeschool the long in the long haul, right? I'm not here just to homeschool for a year or a couple months or whatever. But this video is my first homeschool collaboration where I am hosting. Make sure you check the link down below of the playlist featuring other secular homeschoolers and their highs and lows when it comes to homeschooling. All right, so I made a list of questions that I am going to go off of. Um, some of the homeschoolers in the playlist, they'll be using the questions as well and some won't, which is totally cool because, you know, freedom of choice, right? So I, when I wrote the questions, I started with the highs and then ended with the lows, but I think I'm gonna start with the lows and then end with the highs. The lows. Have you ever felt overwhelmed with being both the parent and the teacher and how did you handle it? Uh, yes, there has been many times where I felt overwhelmed being both the parent and the teacher. It's like you wanna get, you know, whatever lesson or whatever subject, you just wanna get it done and you can't because there are emotional stuff going on that you need to deal with. And so you just, you drop the schoolwork and you deal with the emotional stuff because that is more important, in my opinion, than the academics. If my kids can, you know, learn how to regulate their emotions in a positive way and learn how to, you know, interact with other humans in a, in a respectful manner, then that is way more important than the academics. Academics can come later. You can, you can get that anytime. What's one thing you wish you had known before starting your homeschool journey? I wish I had known how draining it could be. Homeschooling is a lot of work. It's like a, it's like a job that you don't get paid for. <laughs> the appreciation is not really there. And it's draining, you know, especially for someone like me who's an introvert and I refuel myself when I'm alone and I don't have any alone time. Like if one kid's in a class, I'm hanging out with the other two kids. Even like my two youngest, I take them to an enrichment center, but I'm there at the enrichment center. <laughs> I'm not by myself. And so they come and see me all the time. And um, it's just, yeah, there's, it's draining. And so I need to make sure that I refill my cup because if I don't, then I'm not the greatest of people to be around. Was there ever a subject or topic that you found difficult to teach? And how did you overcome this challenge? It's not so much that it's difficult to teach, which is math, but it's just frustrating for me to teach. I don't have the patience to teach math. That is what I have learned. I love math, I just don't love teaching it and so what I've done is outsource it so with my oldest he does Beast Academy which he's almost done and then I have to figure out what he's going to do next which is going to be another online program either uh, what's it called Mr. D math with Mr. D Mr. D math I don't know um, that dude or um, Beast Academy does have online classes for their their upper grade art of problem solving is the parent company and that is the original company and they have a bunch of like um, high school classes. So I don't know, either I'm gonna put them in one of those classes or Mr. D, I haven't decided yet. Can you share a moment when you questioned your decision to homeschool? It happened early on. It's like when I, when I first had kids, even before I had kids, when I was a teacher, I said, if I ever had kids, I would homeschool them. And when I had kids, started having kids, I said, I'm gonna homeschool my kids. And then when my oldest was ready to enter kindergarten, I had second thoughts. And I ended up putting him in a, an alternative type of program called Open Classroom. And that didn't work. I don't know if it's because it was connected with the local st school district and the local st school district didn't really like the program because it was too, it was kind of un unschoolish. So it was too out there for them and they ended up closing the program soon after we left. And it didn't work out for us. 
And so I ended up pulling him out and homeschooling him and I've been homeschooling my kids ever since. So I think that initial in the beginning where I was just worried that he was gonna lose out on the public school experience because I had a very positive experience as a kid and I didn't want him to miss out on it. And then I just realized it was just, I was spending so much time in the classroom. It's like, why am I doing this? I might as well just homeschool them and have more freedom. And so that's what we ended up doing. Have you faced any social stigmas or misunderstandings about homeschooling and how do you deal with that? Yes, people have assumed that we're Christian and that we shelter our kids. And neither of those are true for our family. We are a secular homeschooling family and we do not shelter our kids. And what I do, I just like tell them, no, we're not, not all homeschoolers are Christian. And I, you know, I don't need to explain to anyone what we do, but it does kind of irritate when people make those assumptions of us. And it just shows how limited their knowledge is of homeschooling. I know a lot of people, you know, during COVID and they were like crisis schooling, is that it? And that is not the same thing as homeschooling. Sorry if you think it is, but it's not. And I know quite a few people who ended up homeschooling their kids after the whole pandemic. And they said what they're doing now is completely, completely different than what they did when they were crisis schooling. So next is how do you handle the lack of me time or self care while juggling homeschool duties? And this kind of relates to that other question about um, what I wish I had known before starting my homeschool journey. So what I do, I, I pepper them in throughout the day. I have this little, nice little morning routine where I wake up, where the dog wakes me up and I make myself an AG1 and we go outside and enjoy the garden while he does his thing. And then I get a little bit of morning sunshine, some of that vitamin D. It kind of helps me wake up and then I come back and I make myself some, um, I don't drink coffee anymore, but either a protein matcha latte or a protein mud water latte, depending what I'm having, what I feel like that day. And then I'll read a book and, and then we'll start our day. Sometimes I'll add some breath work or yoga. I just kind of do whatever I feel like. I don't have like a 20 step routine like some people online like to share. No, I don't have that. I do have what is kind of like a menu. So I have like the main things that I do, which is my AG1, my latte of some sort and reading a book. And then I kind of select depending on how I'm feeling and how the day's going from a list of other things that I can do before it's time to start our day. But for the most part, I don't spend too much time with a morning routine. And then Throughout the day, I have little like, you know, five, 10 minutes here and there where I'm doing something for myself just to kind of replenish, especially since I am an introvert and I'm also an only child. So I'm used to being alone and I'm not alone <laughs> at all. And it's very draining for me. So I make sure I pepper in that time. And then at night, like after, you know, dinner and clean up and we're all settled down, and my kids are doing their own thing for a bit before bedtime. And then I go lay in my bed, sometimes with a cup of hot herbal tea and either I'll read a book or I'll watch a show. That's pretty much how I replenish myself. I need to do more, which I'm working on with a life coach right now. So some of you know, I am training to become a life coach with Beautiful You Coaching Academy and I have a coaching buddy that we're practicing on and so I mean she's really good at what she does and so she's 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 uh, helping me um, with some of my goals which I'm excited about and one of them is incorporating more self-care more me time more alone time for myself and so I'm excited about that. And soon I will be opening up some pro bono spots come probably January. So if you're interested, make sure you send me an email. And next is what's your biggest challenge in keeping homeschooling engaging for your child or children? You know, I gotta switch things up. I can't, we can't be doing the same thing all the time because it just gets boring and monotonous. So like we switch things up. And so for us, what I found is if we homeschool like in little 
six to eight week sessions and then take like one or two weeks off, sometimes more, but usually one or two weeks off. And during that time, I'll prepare for the next six to eight week section. Se session, yeah, that works when, when we do that. And I try to switch things up. We try to do different things. We have different focuses, it just depends. And so that is how I kind of keep things a little bit lively. Also peppering in like field trips and little adventures here and there because I mean, I don't know, homeschooling can get monotonous if you let it. And I just, I don't want it to be because like I said before, I want homeschooling to be sustainable. I want it to be something that we're not gonna burn out on. And I want it to be simple and easy. And so I incorporate all those different techniques and methods in order to you know, accomplish that. We're in year seven <laughs> right now. My oldest is 12, my youngest is five. So what do we have? We have at least 13 more years of homeschooling, right? <laughs> All right, so now we get to talk about the highs. We get to end on a high note, right? What's the most rewarding moment you've had as a homeschooler? I know people aren't big on test scores and stuff, and I'm not either, but you know how that part of you where you're worried that your kid is falling behind, that they're not doing enough? And then since we homeschool through a charter, we have an option to do the standardized testing or not. I opt to do it just as kind of like a baseline for us, just for my own knowledge. Like I tell my kids, like you just do the best you can or um, you just do your proudest work, not the best you can, but do your proudest work and that's good enough. And then I will look at their test scores and they'll be like, oh, I guess, you know, here I am worried about my son's not being at grade level in math and he's like way above grade level. Or here I, here I am thinking that my son um, is not very good with language arts, like he doesn't wanna like read assigned books and stuff like that. But then when he tests, he's like testing at like uh, upper high school level. So I find that rewarding. Some other people may not. To me, that just reconfirms in my mind that we're on the right path. How has homeschooling strengthened your relationship with your children? I, I feel like I'm very close to my kids. We spend a lot of time together, more time than my, my public school friends, to be honest. And, and they will agree that they don't spend as much time as, as I do with my kids. But not saying that spending all that time is, is important, because a lot of times some people will spend a lot of time with their kids, but then they're ignoring them because they're on their devices or whatever. You know, it's quality over quantity. I'm really close with my kids. My kids are really close to me. They come to me with, you know, whatever problems that they're having. They talk to me about stuff, and I hope that continues when they get into high school, when they become teenagers, but we'll see. But yeah, I feel like our, our relationship is really strong. And, you know, family is very important. And I'm just, yeah, I'm happy to homeschool. I'm very fortunate, very lucky to be able to do this because not everyone can. Okay, this question is kind of redundant. So obviously I didn't like edit my questions <laughs> very well. Can you share a moment when homeschooling made you feel incredibly proud? Have you ever had those moments where people will randomly test your kids, like they find out you're homeschooling and then they'll randomly test your kids to see if they know anything? When my kids can answer the questions, especially if they know what grade they're in and they can answer that, that is a very proud and rewarding moment for me. <laughs> What's one subject or skill you were able to deep dive into because of homeschooling? Um, history, I mean, I love history. So I'm, I'm excited when we get to deep dive into like historical topics, that just excites me. A science too, I love science. And when we can deep dive into like science topics and that's, that's exciting. Or like even books, like I love reading and reading books. And so be, being able to have like little mini book club discussions with my kids, that's, that's I love that. So yeah, homeschooling just allows us to have time to deep dive into the topics that I love and also what my kids love. And I really, yeah, it's really awesome to be able to do that. Like I remember even doing it as a teacher where my students are really into a topic, but we have to move on because we're supposed to keep pace with all the other history teachers and history classes at the school. And yeah, it's kind of disheartening when you can't dive deep. And so being able to do that as a homeschooler, I just really love.
How has homeschooling allowed you to cater to your child's learning needs? I feel like with my boys, it took them time to learn how to read and homeschooling allowed me to let them, you know, not rush them and not make them feel bad for not learning how to read at a young age. And so that was really great. Being able to take time with them to, you know, build up their confidence, build up their skills so that they could be happy, be confident readers. And that was obvious with my oldest once he learned how to read. He didn't learn how to read until like the end of second grade, almost third grade. And now he, you know, seventh grader reading at a like 11th, 12th grade reading level. And with my youngest son, you know, I'm teaching him how to read and he is having some challenges and, you know, we're just able to take it slow. We're able to be repetitive. We're able to just being able to work one-on-one -on -one with them is really beneficial. I'm glad that we're able to homeschool because it's really helped my kids. And then also my boys have um, difficulty sitting still and being focused. And so be, being able to homeschool, you know, allows for more movement, for more breaks. And, you know, we don't have to keep to like a strict schedule at all because, you know, homeschooling is very flexible. Has homeschooling allowed you to be more flexible with your family schedule? Any examples? So yes. Homeschooling has allowed us to be very flexible. My husband, he's back at work now, but before his accident, he sometimes he would be gone out of state for work. And there'd been times where we were able to pick up and go join him while he was working out of state, which was really nice. We spent like a good amount of time in Arizona and Prescott, and we really fell in love with that area and even considered moving there, which we probably should have done before the pandemic because prices there are horrendous now. And then also like recently, the Hokulea, uh, the Hawaiian canoe came to port, came to our, our local harbor here. And we weren't sure what day they were coming because just because of the weather and everything. And so being flexible enough to like go see them arrive was really awesome. And then also, you know, some days we just don't feel like homeschooling because we're just not feeling it. We need a break or something. And so being able to take those breaks and like just chillax and do nothing, or maybe do something adventurous and get out of the house, like just, yeah, homeschooling really allows for flexibility and we really love it. And then on top of that, like this whole, if you're watching this currently, hollow thanksmas is like going on right now. And that is like a crazy time period for us. I don't know about you. Being able to take days off from homeschooling, do all these other things or prepare for all these other holidays is really great. As I'm filming this, we're just two weeks away from Thanksgiving. So we're probably gonna take a week before Thanksgiving off so we can go see our family. And then what, three weeks later, four weeks later is Christmas, right? And so we'll probably take another two, three weeks off for that holiday season. And then, yeah, and then come January, we kind of ease ourselves back in because life has been so hectic. We just kind of need to re-establish our routines after the holiday season. So yes, homeschooling allows for a lot of flexibility, which we totally appreciate. What's the best field trip or hands-on learning experience you've had? I think the best one we've ever had was when we went on like a, like a, a little trip up to Big Bear Mountain here in Southern California. And they have this little museum. It's like the, the Big Bear History, Historical Museum or History Museum, I can't remember exactly but it was awesome it was the kids were free to get in for one right the adults it was just like five bucks for us each or something like that i don't know it was like really inexpensive and there was just a ton of stuff there to look and to see and we just learned so much there's also like a blacksmith there the, the blacksmith was making like little swords and stuff and so the kids got their own little swords or little butter knives that they used there's also gold mining so they were able to mine for like fake gold. And there was also a gentleman there that explained mining and, and he had, there was like a big contraption. It was just really awesome and really hands-on. So if you're a local and you ever make your way up to Big Bear Mountain, make sure you go to that museum. I think it's only open on the weekends, but yeah, that's probably like my favorite thing. <laughs> at Big Bear. We usually, we don't really care for Big Bear that much because it's too touristy, but that was like a, that was a hidden gem 
for sure. Yeah. I hope you found value in this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do. I am trying to hit a thousand subscribers. I know it doesn't really matter much now because you just watch one person's video, they're gonna show up on your homepage no matter what. But uh, yeah, I would love to have a thousand subscribers and I think I can do it by the end of the year with your help. And if you're interested in learning the highs and lows of other homeschoolers, make sure you check out the secular homeschool collaboration here and I'll see you guys or I guess I won't see you guys. You'll be seeing them. <laughs>